another week boys and another twab this week in destiny we're sharing all the details on the upcoming new content update destiny 2 into the light if you didn't have a chance to catch our live stream this week don't worry we'll catch you up and help you prep for the next one this week's topics destiny 2 into the light developer live stream number one recap introducing onslaught destiny 2 into the light developer live stream number two on march 26th the PvP Strike Team Weapon Sandbox updates. Really? Who are you going to call? Guardian Games All Star Standings updates. Bungie Bounty for Good. Guardian Games Cup Leaderboards. It's all a lie. 20% off Silver Cell beginning March the 26th. Or, yeah, March the 26th. Player Support Reports and Movie of the and Artist of the Week picks. I'm curious to see what the PvP Strike Team is going to do because we literally just had a bunch of sandbox updates. Now, Destiny 2 Into the Light live stream number one recap. As we mentioned last week, we'll be releasing our next big content update on April the 9th with Destiny 2 Into the Light. To celebrate this release, we're previewing all the content you can look forward to in a series of live stream events. In our first stream, we shared details about the new upcoming Wave Defense PvE activity, Onslaught. If you, have, if you happen to miss the stream, you can check out the video below to see Onslaught in action. We actually did an entire like breakdown of this, guys, if you want to look into it. Uh, it was more or less like a TLDR video for that one. Uh, and if you're looking for a summary of what this new activity has to offer, we've got all the details below. Introducing Onslaught. Slay enemies, earn resources, build defenses, and sabotage pyramid ships. Onslaught is our new PvE wave-based defense activity where three players defend the last city from increasingly difficult waves of, of the witnesses' forces for some very desirable rewards. More on those next week. All right, good picture. They're still showing just the one map that we've seen. And I'm assuming every week is going to show a new map here. But that's Luna's How. That's Luna's How! What? All right. Well, Luna's How is definitely coming back. Uh, it, took, it took me a second, uh, but yeah, all right, let's, keep, let's continue. Defend against enemy waves. To begin onslaughts, you'll be dropped onto a map and tasked with defending one of three possible locations. Your mission will be to defend your advanced defenses unit, your ADU, from attacking enemy waves and making your way onto the pyramid ship to defeat the boss on board. If at any point on your ADU is destroyed, your match will end. The defending each location consists of 10 total waves. The first nine waves will be divided into three wave rounds, with the waves in each round ramping up in difficulty. Most of these waves will be focused on defending your ADU, but you also have a chance to go on the offensive and take on the witnesses' forces on the pyramid ship. And after each round ends, you'll get a short breather before the wave difficulty is reset and the next round begins. Wow, so there's actually a wave difficulty reset? Interesting. Now, once you've completed nine waves, you'll move on to the 10th wave, where you'll board the pyramid ship to take on the boss. After you defeat one of the many possible bosses, a chest will drop and you'll claim your well-earned rewards. Now, purchase and upgrade defenses. Defeating enemies will allow you to collect scraps, which can be, can you, be used to purchase and upgrade your defenses. These defensive units, such as trip mines, decoys, and turrets, will be placed around the defending area and auto-attack or take damage from incoming enemy waves. The defensive units have three levels, and upgrading them will increase their effectiveness. But be careful, if your upgraded defensive unit is destroyed, it will need to be repurchased and re-leveled. Building a stout defense with the appropriate upgrades is critical to ensuring your success, so spin wisely. What I'm really curious about is like the trip mines. Like, I guess it just does more damage with each level of increase. And I, w will there be like an upgrade to the trip mines where it can actually rearm itself? Because that's the thing, man. It's like, I want to, I don't want it to be a one time use and then it's gone. Now, ADU batteries. During your defense, be on the lookout for ADU batteries that can drop from saboteurs and other special units. If your ADU has taken a beating, gathering the batteries will help you repair some of the health to your ADU and get it back to work in working order. You also earn scrap every time you use an ADU battery. And using a battery on an ADU with full health will earn three times the scrap. I didn't even realize that you got scrap for that. Okay, that's good. Now, complete bonus objectives. Throughout your defense, you'll have the opportunity to complete bonus objectives. They often force a different style of play and at times require you to venture further into the battlefield and away from your defenses. They present a risk, but if you complete them during the wave, when they activate, you will earn valuable heavy ammo to help with your defenses. We were talking about this the other day, guys. You know, Anarchy just got an ammo increase. And if you have a means of providing yourself heavy a lot, in this case, those those extra objectives, then you can literally use Anarchy quite effectively, especially around the ADU to defend the ADU, right? Now, continue your defense. Once you successfully defended your location and defeated the boss, 
You'll continue the battles as you move to a new location to defend. Every 10 waves, the difficulty of all enemies will increase, similar to the, to the way the difficulty ramps during the continued runs in the coil. Now, the ritual playlist version of Onslaught will have you battling through 10 waves to defend a single location, while the standard and legend versions will feature 50 total waves across a total of three locations. Additionally, the legend version will have everything you've come to expect with more challenging difficulty modes, including champions and weekly modifiers. I'm also being told, guys, that this is a, and again, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but this is going to be a permanent game mode. Now, more to come. We look forward to unleashing Onslaught with Destiny 2 into the lights. We'll have more to share as we approach the release date, which includes details on Onslaught rewards in our next live stream. So don't miss it. All right, guys. Yeah, we'll be live for that as well. And next week is supposed to be a feature, feature of all the rewards. Hula Baloo is going to be meta on Onslaught? Eh, maybe. I mean, I, I definitely think it's got, I mean, it's definitely got the, the ad clearing capabilities, right? But again, as you get higher in those waves, things are going to get a lot thicker, dude. I think it's really just going to come down to, like, yes, your your weapons are going to matter, but especially your builds, whatever that may be. You know, I, I think a Stacy build, dropping two Stasis turrets are going to be extremely clutch for this. Now, we still have a lot more to share on Destiny 2 Into the Light with two more live streams on the horizon. Our next live stream will be on March 26th at 10 a.m. Pacific. And if you checked out this week's stream, we hinted at some of the details we've had, we'll have to share. Here's a quick look at the new content we'll be talking about. Brave Arsenal Weapons, a new social space plus new rewards. Okay. Destiny 1 Inspire Armor More. I wonder what the new social space is going to be. The Destiny 1 Tower. Guys, it's coming back, baby. Now, hold up, hold up. Are, are we getting too ahead of ourselves? Are, no, no, no. It wouldn't be the D2 Tower. If it's the Farm 2.0, I'm going to be so bummed out. In addition to the exciting previews, you'll also have the chance to earn some sweet emblems just for watching. If you watch at least for at least 60 minutes across any of the three live streams, you'll earn those held dear emblem. And if you watch for at least three hours total, you'll also earn the additional emblem called Echo Diamond. The time requirements listed here are different than what we originally announced because we are unable to adjust the requirements for the active drops without removing progress already gained by players. We will be remaining live until 11.30 a.m. Pacific for the next two streams to give players extra time to earn these emblems. A lot of people are saying they were only getting somewhere around 92 to 96% of that emblem progress. So hopefully this will fix that. Okay, guys, I think I think the D1 tower is is coming back. We'll see though. Could it be the Elixir quarter? Could it be the farm? Maybe. But man, that would be such a bummer. We'll see. All right, PVP strike team weapon sandbox update. It's the PVP strike team here and we wanted to give you an update on what we've been working on since our last update. We've been paying close attention to how the weapon sandbox has shaken out following the 7.3.5 changes and we have begun the process of fine tuning the sandbox for 7.3.6. It's very clear that some auto rifles are outperforming the competition in the mid-range, with precision auto rifles in general being outliers. This is not purely a prosecutor problem. In fact, six of the 10 best performing auto rifles in high skill lobbies are 450 precisions, with positive outlook being the strongest. Okay, yeah, I, I know you guys have been saying we need to break out positive outlook. We actually have a pretty good role. We'll, we'll break it out. In contrast, the summoner, while usage is quite high, is not displaying nearly the same level of effectiveness in high skill lobbies, despite the Flint Striker perk in the artifact giving it a boost in PvP. After reviewing both the data and a large amount of player feedback, we're going to be making some changes aimed at providing more comp competition for auto rifles in mid-range engagements, along with decreasing the forgiveness of precision auto rifles to keep their ease of use in line with their lethality. So auto rifles, precisions, decrease base damage by 5%. Wow. Hand cannons, precisions, increase base damage by 6%. Adaptives, increase body shot damage by 1% and increase crit damage by 4%. This will give adaptive hand cannons a more forgiving range cushion and will also correct the issue preventing explosive payload from killing in three crits against all resilience levels without, within optimal range. Why can't explosive payload just be fixed outright? Why Why is this even, you know, because currently right now you cannot three tap at certain resilience levels with explosive payload. This is going to fix that, obviously, but I, I still don't know why won't that, why, why is that a bug there? Why can't it just be the same damage overall? That did not take long, guys. I mean, auto rifles were popping for like the past couple weeks and already we're seeing a, a, a nerf here. Now, pulse rifles, rapid fires, increase body shot damage by 3.5% and increase crit damage by 1%. Lightweights increase body shot damage by 6% and increase crit damage by 3%. And adaptives increase body shot damage by 5% and increase crit damage by 2%. Guys, rapid fire pulse rifles in this sandbox already feel really good. I don't think 1% is going to move the needle that much, but you're definitely going to have more forgiveness there. Lightweights, if you've got a, a craftable chattering bone, 
now may be the time i'm we're gonna we're gonna have to see man i mean body shot damage increased by six percent uh i mean this moves the needle in the crit damage by three percent we're gonna have to see now scout rifles rapid fires increase base damage by two percent okay and bows lightweights increase base damage by six percent note that wish and Lemonarch are not affected by this change okay exotic weapon sunshine increased critical hit damage against players of crucible by 11 11 percent to allow it to kill in three crits dude there is something going on with payload perks inside of pvp and sunshot because it has those explosive rounds is is having issues with three with the three tap that's why bungie's giving it this buff i wonder what's going on there why they can't just equalize it across the board whatever the case though sunshot is getting a buff there now last word increase base damage by six percent to allow it to kill in three crits oh boy let me just say this one of the biggest counters of last word has been really just shotguns right like just closing the gap collapsing on a last word user but now that special ammo has been dialed back a bunch if you play with a controller especially if you play with the controller especially and you've played with the new settings the the, the dead zone settings which are phenomenal for controllers i mean it it feels so fluid in your movement combine that with the ability to three tap on last word after this buff oh man yeah i'm sure jake is like loving this right now now general flinch in the new sandbox with the increased reliance on critical hits being flinched off target when using your primary weapons feels especially punishing so we're taking steps to address that issue reduce flinch taken by all primary weapons by 15 percent oh my god that's wild that's everything that is a ginormous nerf there to flinch we're all gonna have lasers i don't I, it's so weird with flinch because yes you do get flinch off target by certain weapons but at the same time that's kind of like part of the skill gap there is like fighting through that flinch in some ways i don't know i don't know i, I guess it's, it's full steam ahead man it's just landing shots now baby now obviously this this is gonna push certain special weapons up a little bit so things like sniper rifles or anybody that actually uses you know linear special linears lawrence driver arbalist however bungie's hoping that the changes there to special and, and the special ammo economy is still going to keep that from not snowballing too much so we'll see but this reduction of of all primary weapons like 15 percent from from that that's that's huge low stability primaries may not be an issue anymore i mean i still think perks like zim moment is still going to be really good you know obviously rapid hit those things are going to still be really really good those are definitely perks that help counter the flinch that's definitely a benefit there uh but we're just going to see guys i mean i i don't know 50 percent is pretty big though and we'll be doing pre and post testing for everything it's going to be very very small like it's probably going to be hardly noticeable in like the pre and post pictures but we'll we'll gather that data all right who are you going to call? Bungie's collaboration with the Ghostbusters franchise went live on March the 19th. Bring it. Iconic in-game accessories to Destiny 2, including the Slimer exotic ghost shell, a Goraka-inspired exotic sparrow, and an Ecto-1-themed exotic ship. Let me just ask, who was... I mean, not that I'm against this, but who was asking for this collab? It seems like such an unusual collab here. By the way, Slimer papercraft gift starting on March 19th. Anyone who makes a purchase at the Bungie store will also receive a Slimer ghost shell papercraft at no extra cost. Okay. Oh, this is Sony. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Now, Guardian Games All Star Standing Update. We're in the final few days of Guardian Games All Stars, and the suspense is ramped up. Yeah, I'm sure it has, Bungie. I'm sure it has. After a dominant performance from Hunters over the first day, few days, Titans came roaring back, winning several days in a row. Now we have Warlocks on board, showing they won't go down without a fight. With only a few days left, we'll no doubt. See We'll no doubt see a strong final push from all classes. Dude, this is such bullshit. You're telling me Warlocks, who didn't even crack 10 million once last week in the featured playlist, they hit 50 million yesterday? Get the hell out of here, Bungie. There is no way. If, if Titans could just win two more days, if we win one more day, we would tie with Hunters. If we win two more days, we would actually squeeze the win out. What's going to end up happening is Warlocks is going to win every single day this week, which is going to result in them only having six days, and then Titans are only going to have six days, and then, wait, hold on. Did I count this wrong? We have seven? Titans have seven? We have seven? What if it's a three-way tie? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do these medals, the silver and bronze count too? I thought it was just whoever's got the most gold. You gotta be f***ing with me right now. Are you shitting me? You're telling me this is gonna come down to some 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 incremental decimal? Are you telling me we can't win? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying Titans can't win? Are you telling me Warlocks could actually win this? If Warlocks win every day for the next week, they could win this? Well, they, if they got if they get seven, but they have more silver. All right, I don't know, man. I here's the thing. Uh, what I would what I would prefer is if Warlocks honored their alliance 
and continue to eight times play time this week give us eight goal maybe even nine and i think that's enough to get us the win i would like to consult the 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 head of warlocks whoever that may be it's obviously not less because less flipped the coin last week and then less played a time for the rest of the week but then he proceeded to say no the deal was we won last week Titans got week two and then warlocks get week three which was bullshit the agreement was Tynes win 2024 and Warlocks win 2025. That's the agreement. We'll leave it at that. Bungie Bounty for good. The Bungie Foundation is excited to bring back the Bungie Bounty with a special charity twist. Beginning today, March 21st, the Bungie Foundation will host its first Bungie Bounty for good live stream on its official Twitch channel. Guys, you can go check that out. If you defeat the Bungie Fire Team, you will earn the Light Lotus Emblem exclusively for Bungie Bounty winners. Breach Point the Bungie, Bungie Fire Team scores, the Bungie Foundation will donate $3 to share pot supporting Direct Relief and International Rescue Committee. This month's Bungie Fire Team features Scarrow, representatives from both charities, and three Bungie team members. Excellent stuff, guys. All right, Guardian Games Cup leaderboard updates. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Good stuff, everybody. Keep popping up. Keep keep raising. Good stuff. Also, 20% off silver starting March the 26th. Starting on Tuesday, all silver packages will be discounted by 20% for one week through April the 2nd. Look for discounts on platform store of your choice beginning on Tuesday, March the 26th. As a reminder, silver does not transfer between platforms on the same account. Hot damn it. That's probably going to be pretty good because I guess you get the 20% off and if you bulk buy, I'm not saying you should go out and buy silver, but if there is a, a certain armor set that you wish to get and it, it is only obtainable via silver, then at least wait for the discount, right? All right, Passage of Persistence, beginning with update 7.3.5.2. The Passage of Persistence will no longer become flawed if players lose a match while still at zero wins. Upon reaching seven wins, the weekly adept weapon will be awarded. All right, so that that bug should go away. Twitch drops. Players should ensure that they have successfully connected their Twitch and Bungie.net profiles in order to earn Twitch drops from live streams. Once earned, drops must be claimed on Twitch before they appear in game. For more information on how to enable and claim Twitch drops, please see our Twitch drops helps article. All right, now claim your event card items. Yeah, I don't care for that. Uh, known issues. The word of Crota Hankan is using the incorrect stack group when viewing through the API. The silver tier achieved triumph may not unlock for some players after acquiring a higher tier score. Players who interact with a skimmer while stranded or grappling will ride the skimmer at an incorrect angle. When radiant, the warden's law hand cannon does not gain benefits from anti barrier rounds. All right, as a final note here from Bungie, that's everything for this week with Guardian Games winding down. Don't forget to complete the drop-in quest so you can keep the all-star vector skimmer when the event ends. We put some clarification quests out on uh, uh, guides on that, guys, if you want to look into that. But the main thing is, is just turn in those diamond medallions. If you've gotten a diamond medallion from Twitch drops or wherever else, make sure you turn them in and make sure you turn them in on time. It has issues. I've heard of issues where you've turned them in on Hunter, turn them in on Warlock, and it doesn't count. Or in some cases, it gives you less points. Make sure you turn in the Titans to get that full 300 so you can lock in that skimmer. We'll be back next week with even more Destiny 2 into the light details. In the meantime, be good to each other and thanks for hanging out with us, Destiny 2 community team. Guys, that's it. That's your TWAB. Outside of that, the biggest thing from the day, Luna's Howl is officially returning to us as seen right here from that Guardian. That's Lord High Fixer. That's Luna's How. What? Which is which is similar to Lord High Fixer. Yes. No. It's Luna's How, guys. I tell all the the whole band weapons are coming back. It all makes sense. It all makes sense why Recluse is coming back. Mount Top is coming back. Bungie's like, listen, we gotta get the people back for the finer shape. Blow die low. Blow die. Blow everything. Everything we got. It's gonna be a 140. But I'm curious to see what what rolls. Are, I mean, it's gonna be randomly rolled. Obviously, Mag a magnificent how has to exist on it. I don't know, man. What would you want to see with magnificent how, chat? If 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 we have magnificent how there, what is a perk combination with magnificent how that would be really good? Think think about what Luna's how is. Like, think about what that perk is. I mean, I don't think Bungie would do it because it seems like it would be way too strong. But what if you did Precision Instruments and Magnificent Howl together? This is all about landing. It's all about going for the um, the crits. And I mean, the fact that they're calling it Banned Crucible Weapons, that sounds like a Banned Crucible Weapon. I mean, that's, that's, that's why we're speculating Red Death is going to be a part of this as well. We'll see, guys. We'll see. Again, next week's feature stream will be live for that. They're going to be showing us a bunch of rewards, hopefully a new map. And uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be live streaming that alongside Bungie. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.